very warm welcome to this very insightful panel discussion i have with me experts from the field and i'm going to just give you a little bit of background on what the topic is uh, and then introduce you to our speakers the topic of discussion is unlocking the potential of a hyper local edge cloud now the covid-19 pandemic in india has amplified the already existing digital divide innovation for better efficiency and hustle for better unit economics are the only ways to make digital access affordable as well as reliable sugarbox networks is connecting the next billion users to explore the potential of a hyper local edge cloud this is going to be a very interesting discussion and joining me here is rohit paranjpe who is the co-founder and ceo at sugarbox networks we have ripun jay bararia who is the co-founder and cto at sugarbox networks thank you very much gentlemen for joining us today now before i dive into what this really means uh, as far as india is concerned uh, my first question to you is a little bit about the name sugarbox for a tech company um, and that's something that i want to ask you how did you come up with this name and uh, what does it really mean audience is very wide you know right from someone in a village to someone in an aircraft uh, we wanted to have a name that sort of everyone could relate to or appeal to everyone uh, the second was we also wanted to make it simple that literally the way to do it is you know a four year old kid should be able to kind of thing and it sort of ticked all the boxes which is why i said sure right that's an interesting name and an interesting history behind the name uh you know i want to bring you in ripun jay because you know when you, you're the tech guy out here and uh, you know when you talk about hyper local edge cloud i don't think a lot of people listening to us do really know what that means so can you de-jargonize it for us and then tell us in very simple terms what is the meaning of a hyper local edge cloud and how can we benefit from it so uh if you look at very very simply hyper local literally means as local as close to you as possible and uh, the idea behind the whole concept of hyper local edge cloud was to get the cloud which is all the big names and then all the big uh, people in the industry which are there and they're offering all of their services uh, you still need to be connected to the internet you still need to be available Uh, what we wanted to go out and get done from an hyper local concept was to have the cloud move from the internet internet per se to right down to a extremely close entity which you could use even literally inside a house uh, inside a cafe where you are sitting and then utilize all the services over there itself so so that's what a hyper local thing is uh, today utilizing a hyper local network or or hyper local edge and uh, on top of it utilizing the cloud infrastructure which is associated with it is something which requires you have connectivity you have internet you have reachability and everything in place uh, we wanted to go out and sort out the complete uh, the the biggest issue that we as a developing nation have been facing for such a long time is the complete uh maybe not lack of connectivity but the whole disconnected or, or, or very random connections very bad connectivity and very bad network areas that we all have across the board that is what we want to sort out so even though we have all the big names giving out all the cloud and services associated with it uh no connectivity literally means we can't access any of it so that is where the whole edge cloud came into picture and that is the reason that we started working on the hyper local part of it so we could give, bring the cloud close to you so that you can utilize the cloud as a as a local entity instead of something which is always only on it so this just to simplify this for our audience what this means is basically you can access your movies and your ott yes. without having a internet connection internet connection uh, yes. permanent internet internet connection yeah so that's a, an interesting aspect out there uh, rohit i'd like to bring you in out here to tie into what uh, uh, ripun jai was talking about the challenges of the gaps in the indian market so what kind of gaps do you see are existing even now um, is this pertaining only to the tier 2 tier 3 cities uh, and beyond or uh, is this applicable to even metros at large it's a very interesting question a very interesting way to look at it right if you if you really look at the ecosystem it's not just india you know the problem that we're talking about are literally synonymous across the world and there's a reason why those problems exist right uh, so there are two parts that i want to i would like to touch upon as a part of this question right uh, very few of us actually know that there is something called as a cdn or a content delivery network that actually lies at the back of the internet right this is literally the back end internet infrastructure 
that is it literally uh, determining what data gets stored where on the internet so the internet it's, 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 it's literally like the big hard drive on the internet for right. everybody to access right uh, and the key part right now is all of the big cdns that you see right uh, we had akamai which is the largest cdn in the world or google has its own cdn apple uh, uh, apple has its own cdn amazon has its own cdns facebook has its own cdns one is a perfect right? Uh, and there's a bunch of other uh, CDNs that exist. Uh, all of these CDNs, the core technology for this was built in the year 2000, right? Or 95 to 2000 is where the technology was built. And the reason why the architecture of these CDNs is the way it is, is because there's barely any video at that point, right? There's barely any traffic on the internet. Uh, the traffic on the internet has exploded over the last decade, right? In India, it has exploded over the last five years. But just to understand how much is that explosion, uh, you know, between 2000 and today, the data consumption has grown thousand times. And because of that, obviously what these CDNs also have been doing is they're trying to put more and more servers. That's the first thing that has happened. The second thing is they're trying to put more and more servers in more and more geography, right? But now that the data is scaling up so quickly, and obviously the world is moving towards, you know, now we want, we're not happy with just video. We want full HD video. We want 4K video. Uh, the world is moving towards newer technologies of AR, VR. Uh, we are talking about a connected world with connected things that require super low latency. Uh, this infrastructure just can't scale for the future, right? There has to be a monumental shift that needs to happen. And the reason why even in connected places, right? So let's say I have a great connection at my home. I have a hundred Mbps line, but still when I'm trying to stream a live cricket match in full HD, it keeps buffering, right? Why does it keep buffering? I mean, I have a hundred Mbps connection. What more do you need, right? But the reason for this is the way the backbone has been structured today, right? So that's the first real gap in the industry that we're trying to solve. And the way to solve this gap is just very, very simple, right? How close to the user can we deploy it? So today, everyone wants to deploy this infrastructure inside data centers. We are saying, hey, chuck data centers for a telco. Can I go and literally deploy it at a telecom tower, right? Let's get as close to the user as possible. Uh, if you're talking about your home internet provider, can we, today it is in, in that home internet provider's data center. We are saying, can we go and put it in a box that your home internet providers put li puts literally at an area level, right? That is what will be able to improve the experience. Uh, and this is what we call as the edge cloud, right? Uh, and then the hyperlocal edge cloud that Rapunia is trying to explain about actually takes it a big notch further. Right? The second important gap, and, and this is not technology at all, right? This is just economics. If you, if you look at uh, India or even the whole world, you will see that as long as you are in a city like Bombay, Delhi, Bangalore, Hyderabad, most parts of the city or internet works fine, right? Whether you are on a, on a Wi-Fi or you are on, on a telecom connection, it works all right. Uh, the problems start happening as you start going into the interiors of the state, into the interiors of a country. Uh, and the reason for it very simply is if you look at the economic model of the industry, uh, an internet service provider typically is earning how, right? From one square kilometer area, it depends on how many subscribers can the can the network get multiplied by what is the average revenue from each sub subscriber, right? That's the ROI for a network. Uh, and this problem we are trying to solve by a very unique structuring of the economic model on the industry, right? So what happens is if you take a villager, right, who today a network finds unviable to connect. Uh, you still have the digital services who have monetizable uh, monetization ability for these users, right? So Google can still monetize this user. It makes sense for a Google to still reach uh, this particular user. Same as the case with Facebook, same as the case with the FinTech players, same as the case with education players, same as the case with health tech players, same as the case with agri tech players, right? We are saying as an infrastructure, can we enable the digital economy to reach the next billion users? The digital services can monetize these users. Can we now take a share of this and give back to the networks so that the networks actually find sense in connecting these users? And then as the networks connect more users, the digital services can tap into them more and monetize them more. Okay, so you're creating a symbiotic model that sort of works for the whole ecosystem. 
very interesting uh, out there. Uh, Ripanta, I want to talk to you a little bit about, uh, you know, when we talk about the whole digital ecosystem, we're talking about digital India, we're talking about growth panning out. So with the kind of solutions that you have, how reach, how far reaching could implications be on an overall basis? So if you look at the basis of what an, what an edge cloud is, ultimately what we are trying to do is then, first of all, we're not trying to replace internet at all. What we're trying to do is enhance, one, the reach, the availability of the internet. We're trying to augment the capacity of the internet itself. So, so uh, if like what Rohit was just talking about, if there is a mobile network tower which needs to be deployed at a village level, which is only going to serve maybe a thousand customers, it might not really be viable for a mobile network operator to go out and deploy it over there. And, and that is one of the reasons that the Indian government has been pushing the all the various different services and uh, all the various different companies, even in their licensing also, that if you want to take a mobile license, you have to have to go out and deploy in the urban and the villages and everywhere else. The problem is the pace is very, very slow. Uh, with what we are trying to do is trying to take that limited or almost limited connectivity and trying to enhance it and augment it so that even with the low end connectivity in a village, which is almost sort of uh, feasible for a mobile operator to provide, we can enhance the capability and the capacity of that limited connectivity environment that they can offer and offer more services, faster services, lower latency services and access to a lot of content and, and content is about everything. So uh, like uh, Rohit has been talking about the whole, every single stream that is there, content ultimately being able to reach to the end customer, even in a low connected environment also is what we are trying to get sort about. You know, from a business guy, you speak about impact. I, I always talk numbers, right? It's, uh, I mean, that's what matters at the end of the day in many different ways. So if you really look at what, everyone is talking about it. If you talk about the digital India, digital economy, digital growth, uh, and this growth being fueled by rural, right? Uh, we all inherently believe that the Indian e internet base will grow from 700 million to 900 million over the next five years. Uh, you know, consumption will more than double. You're currently sitting at about 15 GB per user. That's gonna go up to 33 GB. Uh, we're talking about the digital economy is gonna grow more than two and a half times, right? From what it is right now to in 2025. Uh, the problem is when you look at the internet infrastructure layer, right? And let me look at it in the present. It does not look as promising as this at all, right? And I'll tell you why. Uh, today, even if I look at the, the urban areas, right? Just the connected population, uh, the average speed that we get is 16 Mbps, right? Now we may say that, oh, 16 Mbps is actually fantastic. I don't get 16 Mbps. Uh, what's the problem with that? Just to give you context, 16 Mbps ranks India at number 121 out of 143 LTE countries in the world, right? So we're right at the end of what good connectivity means. Uh, the problem, however, is when we are seeing that this, this growth is going to be fueled by rural, the second biggest part here is we believe that internet has been growing phenomenally fast, right? And COVID has just completely exploded things out of the park. Uh, the real problem, however, is that the internet growth in India is actually the lowest in five years, right? Nobody will talk about these statistics, but the internet penetration in India has literally grown only 6% over the last one year, right? And in urban, it has gone down to 4%. In rural, it is currently at about 11%, right? So these statistics are not promising at all. Uh, the worst statistic, however, is that today we have the highest number of inactive internet subscribers in the world, right? We are now sitting at 140 million people who had bought an internet connection, but are not using that internet connection or resubscribing to that or paying for that internet connection anymore, right? Uh, and that also is a very concerning statistic, right? So all of these at an infrastructure layer just say that, okay, we all believe in the Digital India dream, but, but how is this dream really going to be possible? And in many different ways, what we are doing will ensure that one, this dream that we know of and we all believe, actually comes to fruition. But it's not just about this, right? We actually are adding to the digital pie over the next five years. Uh, and the current estimates that we have, we, we believe we'll be able to add about 100 million new users. So take that 900 million to about a billion people connected by 26. Uh, the second is from a consumption perspective, we believe we'll be able to more than double that. So people are talking about 30 GB. 
But the moment you're saying, "Hey, I'm going to consume, you know, full HD content, 4K content, 30 GB is just not good enough," right? So we are saying, with the capacity that we're going to add, even if these one billion people consume 60 GB a month, right, our uh, ecosystem will be able to support it without any problem whatsoever. Uh, and the third most important part is unlocking the rural economy, right? So in the rural economy, we believe that we'll be able to add 50 billion dollars of GMV, and this is. literally the digital services monetizing the rural basis that i spoke about right worth 50 billion dollars over the next five years so this is the impact that we're talking about uh, in terms of real numbers being driven to the economy right uh, some very interesting statistics and uh, perhaps a lot of eye opening numbers uh, that you shared rohit punjai from the tech perspective what kind of evolution can we expect over the next five years a lot of interesting stuff coming up uh, very very soon i don't even know what all we can chat about over a public uh, setup uh, but uh, just from a uh, the 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 typical roadmap that we have right now is to start off with the content delivery part of it it's very very simple very straightforward very simplistic uh what we are adding on is the whole edge compute capability uh, the whole security infrastructure on top of it uh mobile data offload on top of it uh, we are doing uh, edge compute for the iot environment also we are also going to be doing the gatewaying for the iot devices uh, because we will be present at uh, locations which are rural locations where iot is getting deployed in massive scales uh, and we will be doing uh, gatewaying services for all those sensors and all getting into our edges uh, doing local compute so that we can go out and give results at the local level without utilizing bandwidth right back to a data center somewhere All right. On that note, uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us for this very interesting conversation. I think there have been a lot of insights, lots of uh, shocking numbers uh, that you have really <laughs> shared with us, and I'm sure the audience uh, will now have a better understanding on what technology is and how uh, you know this could be the next level of growth going forward for the economy at large. Thanks very much for your time.